All right, now I hear you guys. Okay, let's go. I'm coming back in. I hope so. There we go. I wish I had the Tori Archie down. <laughs> but we're here back this week. We're talking about the friend zone. The friend zone. What in the heck is a friend zone? I saw a couple of people when I posted the promo for the show were like, I've never even heard of that. Um, I've never heard of that terminology before. What is the friend zone? And um, it's like, well, we're going to talk about it. You're going to find out on Friday, on Friday, what the friend zone is. Um, that's where I need to be. So we're going to define the friend zone. We're going to talk about what's good about the friend zone. Believe it or not, there's some good to it. And we're going to talk about when the friend zone goes south, what could be really bad about being in the friend zone or putting someone in the friend zone. So I'm hoping that there are some good questions that will come up in the chat and we'll talk about it. If you do want to join me, um, you're more than welcome to. Let me see if I can get the, get the link in there. And then you'd be more than welcome to join me on here. Okay. Let's see what happens. All right. I see two people. Two people are with us. Good evening. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Miche. How are you? There's the Zoom link in the chat if you want to join me on here. If not, I'll be looking for the comments in the chat. So what in the heck is the friend zone? The friend zone. So for the sake of our uh, conversation tonight, the friend zone is, in general, this what's become known as the space when one person is enamored with someone, but those feelings are not reciprocated. So you like them, but they don't like you. Or they like you, and you don't like them. But we decide, or one person may decide, we're in the friend zone. You're here. Hey, Zaylee, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so we'll talk in, the, talk in the chat. If you don't want to come on the camera, that's fine. But it'd be nice if you would join me. That'd be great. Let me see who else just came in. I see three people there, but we'll see. So one person likes the other person and the feelings are not reciprocated. Another definition of the friend zone is a decision that two people make when they're like, eh, there's a lot that's good with you. They don't quite check all my boxes. So I can tell in our cases, he's a great guy. He's, you know, I'm attracted, obviously. Oh, girl, I didn't know I saw a different name. Hey, she... <laughs> So he's attractive, you know, there's some chemistry there, um, but maybe there's some other things that don't quite add up, but you don't want to let him go. So you say, I'll keep him right here in the friend zone. And I'm sure some of us have encountered that with people that we're attracted to. And they're like, yeah, I, I'm really digging you. But either what, I'm not quite ready. You're like, I'm not quite ready. Didn't you start off the conversation saying that you were looking for a long-term relationship, that you were looking for your wife? I promise you that was all the conversations from 2017, 2018, 2019. Everybody I met was looking for a wife. And I said, wow, I must have a sign on my back that says wife material. But <laughs> of course it didn't manifest, right? I'm still, still single. My husband is on the way, however. But at that time, you know, okay, I'm looking for a wife. You're like, we're having these great conversations and everything is going well. And then I like pump the brakes. Hmm. 
I don't think I'm quite ready or let's slow things down or let's build a friendship. Anybody heard those things? Let's build a friendship first. Hey, Michelle, you can come back on the Zoom, Michelle, when you come, just make sure you're muted. Make sure you're muted. So um, we don't have the feedback, but I hope that you'll join me here on the Zoom. So there's sometimes that, that we have been put in the friend zone. And then I want to hear from you. Has there been a time where you have put a man in the friend zone? Again, you're like, wow, I really like him. It's something about him. Hey, Jay, it's something about him I really like. But I don't know if it's that. <laughs> I don't know if it's that. Hey, cuz, come on in here. So you say, let me put him right here in the friend zone until I figure it out. So let's talk about what's good about that. What's good about that? What's good about this friend zone, okay? So I think one good thing about the friend zone is it gives you a chance to be real. It kind of takes some of the pressure off of trying to impress because we've already established that we're just friends and we're gonna see what happens. Let's see what comes of this friendship. So because of that, folks don't feel like they gotta put a lot of pressure on. I don't have to be extra funny. I don't have to put on, um, be extra cute. And I've heard a lot of guys talking about this lately that they would rather see you in your natural state. So not all the makeup, not all the extensions. They just wanna see the real you so they know who they're really matching up with. And so when you're in the friend zone, you're going to have more of a tendency to do that because you're not trying to impress. You're just trying to be. There's Michelle. You're just trying to be. So there's a lot of pressure off. There's also less pressure or I would say more of an emphasis on being yourself, more of an emphasis on being yourself. We got two. Sheena, you in here twice? I don't know what's going on. I don't know what is happening with our screen. <laughs> but anyway, um, you have a tendency to put more, more emphasis on just trying to get to know that person, right? So I think it's really a good thing to put the emphasis on friendship. We're just trying to be in the space. We're just trying to get to know. So we're not getting all this um, putting on false pretenses, I'll say. One of the other advantages of being in the friend zone is you really get to know who a guy is, his honest opinion about things, his honest perspective about things. I found out that men are generally more honest in the friend zone right? Because again, they're not trying to impress. They're not trying to say the things to you that they know a woman wants to hear, right? That'll draw you into a relationship. So they're a little bit freer to talk about what they really like, what they really don't like, what gets on their nerves, um, what they prefer, because they're not afraid of alienating you, say, tell you the truth. So I think that's another one of those benefits of being in the friend zone, especially if you've chosen to be there. If this is mutually agreed upon that we see something here, but we're not quite sure what it is. So we're going to pump our brakes and we're going to take this super, super slow and consider ourselves to be friends. Okay, so we're still in the pros. We're still in the pros. Is anybody with me? <laughs> we're still what's good about the friend zone. I think you find out what you really want when you're in the friend zone. Again, because you're just coming in raw, being yourself, having some real honest conversations as you're building that friendship. And because you're not exclusive with that person, right? You might be interviewing or have some other people that you are friendly with. So you're finding out, hmm, I never even thought that it was important to me that we're able to have really deep philosophical conversations. I never thought it was really important to me that it was somebody, I found somebody I could kind of gossip with. Never had that with a guy. But because you're in that friend zone, um, all of the emphasis isn't on the flirting. All of the emphasis is not on 
um, again, some kind of surface interactions. Oh, let's just go to a movie. Let's just do this. It tends to open up the door to go a little bit deeper. And so you find out what it is you really want. Maybe I do want a guy that I can go shopping with. Or maybe I do want a guy that he's good to spend some time with me, but he has a lot going on on his own. We don't have to be together every single day. Or sometimes when we start dating somebody right away, we're on the phone with them every day, we're on the phone with them all day long. And it could be in that friend zone, you find out that, wow, you know what? I think I could do a relationship where we see each other most of the time or we have some kind of regular communication. It doesn't have to be every day. So the friend zone opens up the door for that, for us finding out that. It's good practice too. Just getting used to talk to me. And this is especially for some of you who have inboxed me and, and I've seen the comments on some of the posts when you're first getting back into dating. Either you've been in a long-term relationship or you were married for a long time and now you're um, dating for the first time or entering the dating scene again. And it's like, I don't even know how to talk to a, uh, <laughs> these men out here, right? So a man that you have not been in a relationship, like how do you even get started? The friend zone is a good place. Hey, Kimberly Black, welcome, good evening. The friend zone is a great place because again, there's no pressure to be that person. I'm not dating, I'm just getting to know, all right? And so if we, if we frame this just like, any woman that we met on the street or at our job or at the mall, if you use that same energy to get to know this man, you really get to know him as a person instead of, again, I'm trying to date you. I'm trying to get you to, to fall in love with me, or I'm trying to, you know, um, just focus on, I said that physical, that physical connection. So it's good practice to just learn. How do I talk authentically with a man? How can I be myself? right? With some confidence, not be afraid to say some things. I hear a lot of fear still. Um, there was a post that somebody put out today and I put it on my wall and it was about should women approach men? And I'm like, we're still talking about this, right? Because many people, and, and it took me a long time, are still stuck in the old traditional patterns that a man has to approach you first. And so I'm still a school of thought that I do want a man to pursue me, but I absolutely think that there's nothing wrong with letting him know that I have an interest in him. And then he can say yes, or he can say no, or he can say like we're talking about tonight, why don't we be friends? Why don't we get to know each other and then see what happens? I don't think there's a problem with that, but, but for many folks, they're afraid. It's like, for me to talk to a man, I mean, what do I say? What do I do? What do I do with my hands? And I'm just like, wow, just talk to him like a human. <laughs> and that's what that's what you do. So I think the friends don't offer some good practice until you get comfortable um, being with a man that you've never met before. Like, again, especially if you've been in a long term relationship, I think it's excellent, excellent practice. And then just like the example I just gave a moment ago about approaching men first, right? And getting to know and letting them know, you know, what your, um, what your relationship goals or expectations are. It kind of gives you empathy for the fellas, or I hope it does. Hey, Wanda, Wanda, welcome, good evening. What, is, what have they felt like all of these years having to get the, the guts to ask a woman or let a woman know that he was interested in her? We're just kind of taking it for granted. Well, I'll speak for myself. Just kind of taking it for granted that, well, that's just what guys do. What's the big deal? <laughs> you know, you ask me out, and I say yes or I say no. But to understand from a man's perspective, that takes a lot for you to think about, okay, what do I need to say? Where do I position myself? Um, let me wait on the right time. Who's around? Maybe what I need to be wearing. And then all of that preparation, and hopefully she'll say yes. And now that we're in a position to have to do that, that gives me a lot of empathy for guys over the years, especially some that I said no to. And maybe I, I didn't say it maybe as nicely as I could have because I didn't think about all of the courage that it took 
for that man to walk across the room or to show up someplace that he knew I was going to be just to ask me for my phone number, just to ask uh, for my attention and have a conversation. So I think it gives, gives us a little empathy for the guys, right? What does that feel like to, to have to make the first move and not know how it's going to go? So those are the good points. Some good practice, takes the pressure off, really get to know somebody, really get to know what we want. But then there's the flip side. Hey, cousin Jackie, come on in here. You came right on time because we're about to talk about the flip side of the friend zone. And this is the side that most people think about when they hear the term friend zone. I'm not trying to be in the friend zone or I can't believe it. I got friend zoned. Why do people not want to be in the friend zone? Who could talk to me? Leslie said fast. Why, what, what do you think are some of the drawbacks of being in the friend zone? Hey, beautiful. Good to see you this evening. Why would you not want to be in the friend zone? I just said all of these great things about being in the friend zone. Hey, Sherry Berry. Why wouldn't you want to get to know somebody on a deeper level? Why would you not want that pressure on you? Right? Here's why. Because first of all, romantic rejection is not healthy. A lot of times we'll take a hit and we'll sit in the friend zone because we see the possibilities and we see the potential, but nine out of 10, you're breaking your own heart. If you know that you really are feeling that person and they're on a totally different page, probably the best thing you can do for yourself is step off and step away. Now it's not as easy, it's easier said than done right? Because we've already established in previous conversations that there is a very limited, <laughs> people don't like me saying this, but there's a very limited number of qualified individuals to date, especially when you start getting into your 40s and 50s. It's just not a whole boatload of folks out there that you want to spend some time with. So you're like, here's somebody who has potential, like I see, like I said, he's got his own thing going on, he's attractive, he's well-dressed, got manners, but there's just something missing. So you say, let me put him in the parking lot over here, let me put him in the friend zone. That's not fair, that's not fair. And we don't like that when it happens to us. It's like, because those first questions are, well, what's wrong with me? Why wouldn't, why don't you wanna date me? So if there's something missing, even if you can't put the finger on, I think you're just honest with that person. Like, if you're really dating for a relationship, I I don't know if I'm if I'm feeling that, and I don't I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to take your time. I think that's a super mature conversation to have. But most folks, because the deck the deck is stacked, especially especially women, will friend zone a man in the, in a minute because like I don't want to let him go in case something else doesn't come along. And men are doing the same thing. She's a good girl. Or maybe I can have this girl because she checks these boxes. I also have this other girl over here. Yeah. She fulfills those needs. And then maybe there's yet another girl. And like I said, women are doing the same thing. If I got this guy, I'll recap in a minute, cousin. I have this guy who he's really social. You know, we have some of the same interests in going out. But I have this guy over here. Oh my gosh, he's so great at conversation. We have, we've solved all the world's problems. He is just an awesome guy, but there's something not quite there. Then there's just this other guy who knows how to fix things and he's adventuresome and he's really a man's man. I like that, but is something not quite there either. But what you're setting yourself up to do and setting that person up is to get your heart broken, honest to God. Because the more time, this is women, for most women, the more time you spend with somebody, the deeper you're gonna get in your feelings. And if that person has already told you they're on the edge, they're on the fence about you, why well, keep showing up, investing more time and eventually more emotions? Likewise, stringing somebody along that you're not really sure about. You don't think that man is not going to catch feelings? You keep spending time with him and he's thinking, well, 
she she agreed to go out with me again. So she must be feeling something, even though you're saying with your words, no, I'm good right here in the friend zone. Thank you, friend. Good night, friend. Talk to you later, friend. That man is still building up hope inside because you keep showing up. And he's getting to know a little bit more about you. You're getting to know a little bit more about him, but you're still calling yourself friends. So romantic rejection is not healthy. And we set, up, set ourselves up to stay in a space that we're not really being celebrated, that we're only being tolerated. You can break your own heart. The other reason why the friend zone doesn't work is because somebody's not getting their needs met. <laughs> Trust me. Somebody is sitting in that space waiting for something to change. And while you're waiting for something to change, what are you doing? Denying what it is you really want. And whether that's a monogamous relationship, whether that's a committed relationship, whether that's to see this person more or do more or travel. And if you're agreeing to stay in that friend zone when you know you want more, your needs are not getting met. And you're also showing this person that you're, that you're willing to ignore what it is you know you need just to get a corner. Now we know there's a school of thought and this is real old school. It's better to have a piece of man than no man at all. And for some people, they have made that decision. I would rather be his friend. I would rather be on the side. I know he's dating somebody. I would rather do all of that than to wait until there's someone who's on the same um, relationship trajectory as myself. Well, the longer you show that person that you're okay with a half-baked sandwich, the longer you're going to sit in that space and get a half-baked sandwich. Ask me how I know. Let me take a moment to pause. <laughs> you all don't want me to tell that story again tonight, do you? <laughs> she said the devil is a lie. You know, I know about I know about that waiting game, but let me tell you, it's a game. You will set, you will set yourself up to lose. I'm not suggesting putting an ultimatum because ultimatums will get you hurt too. But what I am saying is being clear about what say, Jack, you're not by yourself. Is is being clear about what you want, and if it's not going the way that you needed to go, be honest about that. And say, wow, you know, I really thought that uh, I could slow walk this with you, but I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit deeper. And if you're, not, if you're not going there and I get it, then I gotta remove myself. Now, that person may say, wait, you know, I don't wanna let you go just yet. So let me step it up a notch. Let me, let me bring a little bit more skin in the game. And then maybe you start working on something. But it could be that that person says, you know what, you're absolutely right. And as they step away, realize that was the best thing for both of you. Some people end up coming back better. Some people you end up moving on and that creates space for you to have what it is that you really want. So the worst thing you could do is sit somewhere and deny that you're not okay because you're trying to wait until things get better because you're weighing your options. That's using people. Have you ever done that? Somebody said that you just, you really in essence using that person. I know that they're just, sit, they're just sitting there, they're a kind of a space filler. I've called them pacifiers. <laughs> if you think about a pacifier, right? What is a pacifier? A random piece of plastic that a baby chews on. They're not getting any nourishment from it right? But it settles them down and it calms their nerves and it makes them feel what? Like something is going on. So we do that with people. He's not really my type. I'm not really feeling him, but I don't want to be alone. <laughs> or it's better to sit at home. Or it looks good to have this person on my arm. So you use them as a pacifier. That's so wrong, especially if you know that that man wants something else. And he said, that, I'm looking for a wife. I want a woman of my own. You holding him up for finding his wife. Why are you using him as a pacifier? 
Some women do that, use a man as an ATM. Shame on you. I know it's no women here in this group because we're quality ladies, but it's some women that'll do that. And say, so, well, I'll keep, I'll keep dating them and I'll keep them in the friend zone because at least I know how I'm going to eat two or three days out of the week. Because <laughs> he's going to take me to dinner. We're going to eat good. Or if we go to someplace really good one night, I know I got, um, <laughs> I've got a doggy bag that I can, that I can eat off of for the next couple of days. I've seen people do it. Let that man go. Let that man go. I know. It's a, <laughs> you said, don't tell. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want me telling their secrets, but it's true. But it's absolutely true. So here's where it gets even trickier. So let's just let me set the stage for this. Okay, you all with me? Set this, I'm gonna set the stage for this. So we've agreed to be in the friend zone. Okay. He likes you, you like him. We're not quite ready to move into a relationship, but it's something about you. I want to sit here in this space a little while longer with you keep getting to know you and so now we're going out every weekend friday saturday hey was that a good evening we're going places we're talking on the phone every day before we go to work after work we're texting in between that's starting to sound like a relationship isn't it sounds like one to me but we're still friends we're still friends. So now you start spending more time with this one friend than you do with the other friends in the rotation. And now one of you, one of you starts feeling some kind of way physically. Hugs get a little bit longer. Maybe there's an accidental kiss. Maybe there's a kiss on purpose because you want to see how far it's going to go. So now we're in the gray area. We're kind of together, but we're not together. So do we bring sex into this? The sex come on the table. Do now we turn into friends with benefits, sexual benefits, or do we keep it platonic until we decide we're going into a relationship. Talk to me. You all are quiet this evening. Some folks are like, we can stay friends. We're still friends. I'm not really dating anybody else, but I don't want to commit to you, but I'm feeling some kind of way because when you touch me, I'm tired of going home, taking a cold shower. We need to do something about this. So that's how we go across the line. Let me say what you said. That could be someone's husband or wife. So if you don't mean any good, exactly. Leave them alone. Hey, Courtney. Good evening, Dolphin sister. Leave them alone, let them go. But what if they're saying, come on, why is that a talk to me? What if they're saying, I don't know. Like I see the potential for this, but I'm not ready to commit. You said you don't see the potential for this. I mean, you see the potential as well, but not quite ready to commit. But physically, the sexual chemistry is off the chain. Can we add that into the friend zone and everybody be okay? Talk to me. Michelle, Sheena, come on, you all right here with me. What are we going to do? Why are we in the holding pattern? Can we add sex? Can we add sex? You be there for years. I'll never be in a friend zone, but I have a spiritual connection to friendship. I need you to say more, say more to me, Tawanda. Good evening. Because if you have a spiritual connection, right, and we're friends on a deeper level, Grown folks put it on the table. And then you're in this gray area. So then, so now what are we doing? It's a waste of time. <laughs> Why is it a waste of time? Why is it a waste? I see people do it all the time. Keep it platonic. So what if you can't keep it platonic? What if you're like, man, every time we're together or when we're apart, again, I'm feeling some kind of way. My body is reacting to this person when we're not together. Then we're together. My body's reacting even more. So we're going to keep it in a platonic friend zone. We're going to need to do what? Cut it off. So if you're on a deeper level with this person, 
to Wanda, you're saying it's no sense. So you've got the friendship, you got a spiritual connection in the friendship. You're not having sex with this person. Why is that? You, you talking to God, you talking to God every day. <laughs> you say, God, take it away. Take it away. Cause this is harder and harder. You have to make a decision. You're either going to have to walk away or create what? Some boundaries. And that's hard once you add sex into it because what happens then? One person or the other is going to catch deeper feelings. It's not always the woman. Sometimes it's the man. Well, now you're my woman, even if I'm still calling you friend. Because now you're giving me your body. I know something different about you, but we're still calling it friends. Somebody's lying to the other person and lying to themselves. That is very difficult to keep that platonic. Very difficult to keep that platonic and you add sex into it. Oh, my bad. Let me get my thoughts together. It's all right, Tawanda. We got, we got a little bit more time. But it's something to think about. I'm just saying that's how that happens. That's very hard. And I haven't talked about this in a long time, but I know I taught my kids this and I taught um, a lot of younger women that I've mentored over the years about that 10 o'clock demon. Have you all heard about the 10 o'clock demon? <laughs> so you could be sitting there all night, all evening talking to someone, having just a great conversation. You might even be Netflix and chilling, right? Everything's going well past the, Pass the popcorn, pass the chips and the dip. We're talking 9.59, we're good. 10 o'clock is something about 10 o'clock, the bewitching hour. And that same person that was sitting there at 9.59 starts looking a little different at 10 o'clock, at 10.01. And you start easing back in your chair a little bit. You all start easing in each other. And it just gets different and it's hard. And I see you saying, Develop some discipline. Again, easier said than done. Okay, so we just going to sit here night after night with a bowl of popcorn between us. Folks, do it. Somebody's frustrated. Trust me, somebody's sitting in that space frustrated. But we'll try to do it. You see, Tennessee. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got not only developing discipline, but being, being clear. So maybe... If that's the case, then I know the 10 o'clock demon visits me. You got to go by nine o'clock, putting some boundaries. That's definitely some discipline, right? Say what? I'm 105 years old and I'm going to end the day at nine o'clock. If we know we're not trying to cross the line or we know we need to be in public all the time, some boundaries. But I'm telling you, as soon as you get in that gray area and decide it becomes harder and harder and harder to stay in that friend zone. And then what you end up doing, you might end up even wrecking that friendship because it's hard to go backward. It's very hard to go backward. So then what? So then you got confusion and then you got actions not matching words. And that's what I was saying a minute ago. So we're friends, right? Hey, Marquita, welcome. We're friends, right? But now we've slept together. But if we, when we were friends, before we started sleeping together, what? That meant I was dating other people and I didn't have to answer to you in terms of my time. There was not an expectation for me to pick up the phone on the first ring. All of that was because we were in the friend zone. But now you added sex to it. I guarantee you one person or both are going to want to change things, whether or not they change the relationship status. And so you got a lot of confusion, actions not matching words. People start leaving things somewhere. I was talking to somebody early, earlier today um, and how people will lie and say that they're okay with things that they're not okay with. And so what happened, what happened to, um, to this individual was the person said they were okay with things kind of being in the friend zone, open relationship, et cetera. Um, we're not committed to each other even though I'm really not dating anybody else. But then she found out the person she was dating was dating somebody else. Oh, now I feel some kind of way. 
Well, you said you were okay with this. And you all established at the beginning that you were not exclusive, but you were okay as long as it felt exclusive. So the girl set a booby trap in the guy's place um, to confront him about dating somebody else. And so he had that conversation with her. We said we were friends. We also said that we were free to date other people, even though sexually we agreed to sleep with each other. There's your confusion. You said you were okay with it because you didn't want to let him go, but you really weren't okay with it. So you're breaking your own heart. And so I, um, I'm trying to see, Sheena said that earlier. You just got to make a decision. And it's, and it's easier the sooner you make it. Sometimes we say, well, let me give it some time. You got to be honest with yourself. There's some folks that are not bothered by sharing. But if you know you're not somebody who, who shares, if you know you're not you're somebody who ultimately wants a monogamous, committed relationship, then don't lie to yourself and put yourself in that space. Because again, as I said, at least three times now, you are setting the stage to break your own heart. We had to be in public. Yeah, you got to be in public to keep those boundaries. That's one of the, one of the surefire ways, right? A little bit harder to cross the line there. Sometimes you have to draw the line and say, where's this going? Do you want to take it to the next level? Because it's not fair for me to keep giving you any of my undivided attention, whatever you feel like communicating with me on your time, not mine. But see, here's the problem. They, they were, she was getting all of his time. She was getting all the time that she wanted. But when she found out there was another person at play, it was like, well, now I'm jealous. So it wasn't like, she wasn't seeing him when she wanted to see him or he was turning her down for an evening because he had other plans. It's just, it kind of came up in a conversation that he had gone somewhere with, with somebody else. And all of a sudden now the antenna comes up because in her mind, this is my man. Even though she's saying with her words, I'm good with us being friends because he's treating me right. Again, I'm getting my needs met, most of my needs met. But that primary need of knowing that he's committed to her, she didn't have. So she flipped the script on him and confronted him and it became, like I said, became a big deal. So you got to be honest with yourself. Good evening, Marsha. How are you? And so, like I said, those are the conversations that we don't want to have because well, now he's going to walk away. He needs to walk away if it's not what you want. It's not any easier day 15 than it is year 15 or day five versus year five, okay? It gets harder. So be honest with yourself. And the last piece, the last, which, which is related to this, the last um, disadvantage of staying in the friend zone is you lose time. I don't know anybody who stayed in the friend zone who ended up with that person that you if you know somebody put it in the chat every person that i know that stayed in the friend zone way too long they end, they end up they're still in the friend zone okay and they might not even be friends with that person because they got to a point where i mean how do you you can't go backward to being platonic now if you create an ultimatum if you don't commit to me, I'm gone. Person might you push me up against the wall, I'm gone. How do you come back from that and continue the friendship? Whereas if you had had the conversation early on before there was a lot of time and a lot of feelings invested, you may have been able to say, well, you know what? At least we can be friends. I can holler at you every once in a while or if I see you out, it's not a big deal. But because we hold on so long and I said I was going to do a show about that, why do we hold on so long? Why do we stay so long? That's relationships, that's marriages, that's friendships. Sometimes we stay, all the red flags are there. All of the voices are talking to us. Walk away, step away. <laughs> and we will still sit there. And, and some of us, you know, we'll pray till times get better. Lord, please make it happen. Lord, do it for me. And God is either quiet or he's telling you, move on. 
<laughs> in, a, in a deeper way than you said before. And we're still set right there, right there, right there. Good evening. I'm good. Thank you. You made it. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. So you lose time. You lose time. And you look up two or three years, four or five years. I've talked to women at least 10 years. Get in that cycle. He's not ready. He's not ready. I'm not ready. Maybe we'll be ready in six months. Maybe we're ready after Christmas. Then life starts happening. Oh, goodness. My mother, my granddaddy, my kids. Still waiting, still waiting, still waiting. And they look up and all that time has passed. And not only are you not where you need to be in your relation with your relationship status, but there's probably a lot of other things in your life that you should have been tending to and you were not trying to keep this boat afloat that was going nowhere. So you lose time. The other thing, and I never thought about this till the other day, but someone was suggesting to me, not only losing time in terms of not um, being where you wanna be with your relationship status, but losing time in your development. And I was like, wow, I had not thought about that. So what they were saying is while you're sitting there with this one person, it's not going anywhere. You could still be cultivating your dating skills, right? And your social skills by dating other people, still growing, still learning, still developing, still finding out what you want, but you're stuck there investing everything into this. And all you've learned is that person. And then when that's over, you're back at square one. So the friend zone is not beneficial. It is not beneficial in the long run. And so how do we manage this? How, yeah, I thought that was a great point too. So how do we manage this? First of all, we got to be clear and honest with ourselves about our relationship goals. Again, another conversation I was having, slightly off topic, but, but bear with me. And the person was suggesting, if I have a particular fetish, right? And all of us have our likes and dislikes, but bear with me. If I have a particular fetish, then why would I, for example, go to a library, we'll just say, and I know I'm looking for somebody who's into to handcuffs and whips and chains. Why would I do that? Nine out of 10, I need to go somewhere and join a club or a group of people who are into s and right? Wouldn't that make sense? But what we'll do is I really want a monogamous relationship. I want a committed relationship. And you're looking for people in bars. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you couldn't meet somebody in a bar, but to say, I'm looking for a man who wants to get married, wants to be committed to me. And I'm going to go where everybody is hooking up. That's just not smart. <laughs> it's just not smart at all. So be clear about your relationship goals. If you know you want to be married, own that. If you know you just want a committed relationship, own that. If you know you really want to be single, but you're like, I really want companionship, whatever that looks like for you. You need to be able to describe that. What do you mean by companionship? Because some people think what I described a minute ago is companionship. We're going to spend every night together. We're going to Netflix and chill. We're going to sleep together. We're going to do everything but pay bills. That's, um, <laughs> that is a companionship to them. Okay, so what do you mean by companionship? You need to be clear about it. Be honest with yourself first. And then communicate those goals. We get scared. I have been there. I don't know if I want to push that button because I really like this guy. But you've got to be able to communicate what those goals are and say, you know what? The next year or so, I know I'm ready to settle down and I'm ready to start my family. Or I'm ready to start my business. And I, you know, I already want to be in a relationship. Be clear. And either he's there or he's not. But the longer you sit there does not guarantee that that situation is going to turn around in your favor. It just means you're further away from your goal. So communicate your goals clearly. Um, create and stick to those boundaries. 
So we've already seen some suggestions in the in the group. If you know if you know that you you don't want to be sexual with this person, then don't put yourself in positions that's going to cause that's going to cause you to compromise that or sabotage yourself. Why why make it hard for yourself? If you know I'm not sleeping with this man, I'm not going to do it. But you're going to go away for the weekend, really? You're making that real difficult on yourself, and you're making that real difficult for him. It's also sending some mis mixed messages that almost make makes you seem like um, you're not being totally honest. So you don't want to sleep with me. You don't want to have sex with me. But we're going to go away for the weekend. So we're going to lay in a bed with each other. No, we're going to get separate beds. Okay, let's do that. So now I'm trying to tiptoe and change so you don't see me. And, and I'm tipped. Let me turn my head so I don't see. Really? Stick to the boundaries. If you know it's not what you're going to do, be consistent with it. Be consistent with it. It's crazy, yeah, because you said, not only are you setting the stage, like I said, that you're making a bait and switch, but mess with the wrong fool and find out. You're going to keep went, uh, <laughs> dangling the carrot in front of his face. Then he's going to keep running from it. Again, that's not excusing not excusing a man or saying, you know, that a woman brings that on herself, but at the same time, at the same time, I think that's very unfair and unwise to continually put yourself in a situation that you know you're going to say no to. Why do it? Don't play with fire so we don't get burned and continue the confusion and continue the confusion. Um, so stick to the boundaries. Be honest about your timeline. And I just mentioned that a minute ago. If you know, I'm about to hit this next birthday. By this birthday, I, I know I want to be closer to marriage, a relationship, some type of stability would say that. Or I'm about to start a program. So I really don't want to be in a committed relationship, but I really would like somebody to spend time with once in a while. And then when I'm done, going to school or whatever it is you're involved in, then maybe. be clear about your timeline. Be honest about your goals. Communicate those goals. Don't wait till he asks. Bring it up. What are your goals? Ask him. Create some space for honesty. Because sometimes when we start talking so much about what we want and we haven't asked that person, they will start feeding into that narrative because they don't want you to go anywhere either. So I think it's an exchange of ideas and, and creating, again, creating an opportunity for both of you to be honest with each other so you can keep down confusion. And maybe, just maybe, like I said, add a great person into your life uh, and not lose them because one or both people get hurt. And then the last but not least is being true to yourself, being true to yourself. There is no, at no point in any relationship and I'm saying this is even after you jump the broom and the lady, the married ladies, you can um, tell me if I'm, tell me uh, if you agree with me, send me some hearts. But at any point in a relationship, if your needs are not being met or you feel like somebody is not following through on what they promised or said they want, you must hold them accountable and have the conversation. And likewise, they should be able to hold you accountable and have that conversation that, wow, I thought we said we were doing this. I thought we said we would give it six months and then talk about where we were, hold him to it. I thought we said that we were not gonna sleep together at least till we got engaged, hold him to it. I don't wanna, yeah, I don't wanna go there. Just, I was about to go some, <laughs> someplace else, but, um, at any point, at any point, we got to have a conversation. Now, it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. So I say, always be wise in your timing. I don't think you catch anybody at the, at the front door. I don't think you catch anybody as soon as they get off work. But hey, you know, um, and, I, and I heard some married guys say this. Best place to have a good conversation like that is over dinner. He says, it's real hard to snap and go off when you got a good steak in your mouth. And we're in public. 
So feed him first, right? Let's go somewhere and have it, you know, and then start the conversation. You may end up finishing it at home. That's a great, great way to start it, but don't. The worst thing you can do is keep sweeping it under the rug. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to just see what happens. Guess what's going to happen? Absolutely nothing. And no one can change something that they're not aware of. So if you haven't said anything, nine out of 10, they're going to sit there and think she's happy. Again, she keeps showing back up and she's looking good. Everything's great. And you know that mm, we're two months past our, our timeline. We're two months past this, or this is the second time I've asked him to do something that he offered to do or that he said he would do. So you can't, you can't afford to just sit there and not say anything. Hard conversations, yep, having both hard conversations and soft conversations. And this is the time to do it. Again, I've seen people hold off on this. They will date and they will, again, walk on eggshells and tippy toe. Um, and then once the ring is on the finger, now I want to be that person. We need to have a talk. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> The words are scared every man. I need to talk to you for a minute. The whole time we've been dating, you never said anything. Now all of a sudden the ring is on your finger. You want to bring out the laundry list. That's so unfair. And so be who you intend to be. You need to be that girl day one, but you're going to be on day 100. If something needs to be said, say it. And if you're too afraid to say it, you're not with the right person. You are not with the right person. And be honest about that. For everything that man is bringing to the table, he's fine as hell. He's making the money. You go in places. But you know, it's something about our communication. I'm scared to death to say anything to this man. I have to choose my words so carefully and I hope they don't come out right. That's not your person. That's not your person. You're going to do that for the rest of your life? Walk on eggshells? Go to the thesaurus and say, how else can I say stress? I don't want to use the word stress. Let me go to the dictionary and find a replacement word. That's not your person, boo. So being willing to step away while the damage is still small, being willing to be honest, and maybe, just maybe, you'll get what it is you want. Even though we know that men are not mind readers, I still see a lot of women operate like that. It's just, well, he should know. Any grown man should know that that's what a woman wants. He doesn't know you. He knows women. And depending on the women he's been around, he may know very little. He may have had some really less than stellar experiences. But he doesn't know you. How else can he know you? Some things need to be quarterbacked and shared. And that doesn't make him a lame man. That doesn't make him ignorant. It just means he doesn't know you. Now, if you share those things and you don't see any changes, he's not willing to step up and meet those needs, then again, that tells you something else. And there's a fine line between compromise and settling. All of us have to compromise because there's no perfect person. You, me, them, there's no perfect person. So everybody is making a compromise. Okay, am I right or am I wrong? But if you decide to overlook some very big ticket items like trust, respect, caring, some of those, those um, character traits, then you are settling. And it's going to go from bad to worse. So again, being honest, just like, yep, every man is different. Every woman is different. So you're something thinking this, and, and I'm telling you, I hear this a lot, the over 40 crowd. I know. What man don't know to do that? The man you sitting there fussing about, so tell him. <laughs> tell him, ask him, share, give an example. Like I said, and then if he refuses or he just doesn't come through, it's time to reevaluate your situation but what you better not do is sit in the gray area sit in the gray area and if you choose to sit there you better be clear about how long you're willing to sit there and tell him tell him again being honest up front you know what i slow walk this for a few months 
And then let's come back and reevaluate where we are. Because again, life is happening. And doing this as a full grown adult, all of us are walking around with several other things going on in our lives, work and children and aging parents and this bad economy and everything else. Dating right now is terrible, right? Just think about it, $6 a gallon to try to go somewhere. It needs to be somebody you really want to be with, okay? Whether he's coming to get you or you all are meeting somewhere, it needs to be somebody you're really trying to get to know. But that being, but that being said, um, we really, like I said, we owe it to, we owe it to ourselves to be honest, to be totally honest. Um, and those timelines are one that I think it's coming up a lot in conversations that I'm having. I really have too much going on in my life right now to fully invest in a relationship. But, but let's at least keep talking. Let's stay in contact. And then if things improve or I resolve this, then I come back to the table. And if you're single, we can go from there. But we just, it, it's not fair to put somebody in a holding pattern. And it's not fair to you to put yourself in a holding pattern, if that makes any sense. And if you decide to do it, you better put some, you better put some parameters on it um, so you won't have any regrets. So there's the friend zone. There's the friend zone, the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> don't be using people that don't get used. Be clear, have a good conversation with yourself and make some good decisions. Make some good decisions. 2022 is all about, about making good decisions for yourself. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. And you don't have to prove it to anybody but yourself. So anything you all want to share, I'm trying to say you agree. Wazetta's with me. Looks like Cousin Jackie. Hey, Reverend Pam, thank you for coming through. Venus, hey, Venus, I'm glad you made it absolutely enjoy your freedom that's what i'm saying be be clear this is the, this is the last point i think there's still a lot of pressure on women in particular to have a certain relationship status and again that's something you need to be clear about for yourself if you know you want to be married don't let people tell you girl you to this late day i, I wouldn't even want a man um age i'm, I'm used to being by myself what well, is you you know you want a husband just say that go get you one but if you know i just want to i really just want a companion that's okay don't let anybody steer you from that girl don't you need a man what what happens when you get older you want to be by yourself you need somebody to take care of you so there's a lot of pressure on women at all ages to still have this man in your life you need to be clear if you want one and under what conditions and what that means for you and what that means for him. But to just do it because, oh, that's what everybody down the street is doing. That's what your friends are doing. That's no way to live your life. So I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70, and we've got some ladies in this group, 70 recently married, 60 recently married. You do what you want. There's some that have several friends okay special special friends so that's on you and you're free and you're free to do that but be clear with yourself and be clear with the gentleman that you are meeting and you don't have to like i said you don't have to conduct your relationship by a jury of your peers and i think women women do that a lot we got to get a vote from everybody before we make a move don't ask people to help you make decisions that they don't have to live with the outcome that is about the worst thing you can do. So that's it for tonight. Friend zone, stay out of it. <laughs> okay. You don't want that kind of heat. Next week, I think we're going to talk about why people stay too long. You want to talk about that? That's a good one. I got a whole lot to say about that. If there's something else that you want to discuss, feel free to inbox me or put it in the comments on one of the posts. If you are interested in life coaching or relationship coaching, again, you can inbox me or you can visit my Facebook page, The Complete Sweet LLC. Make an appointment with me there. I would love to carve out some time to talk about your life goals and your relationship goals. 
Uh, if you have a partner and you want to sit down with me, I do that too. One of the things that I enjoy the most. So um, that's what I do in my, in my spare time, right? Something that I'm passionate about. But otherwise, I will see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel, Friday night. And we chop it up again. So have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Sheena. And thank you, Michelle, for hanging out in the Zoom with me. Good night.